Hello, this is Dr. Michael Myers, Associate Professor of Health Sciences at National University. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to do a correlation and simple regression in StatCrunch using some sample data. In my classes, I give this example of maternal age and birth weight. The question here becomes, can we plot the data and include a regression line? Can we find the correlation coefficient r? Can we find the coefficient of determination? Can we define whether or not we have a significant relationship? And can we also do a regression prediction for a birth weight for an age of a mother that we don't have in our x values? This is easily done in StatCrunch if we open up our software. And you can see I've already inputted the values here for you. You can go ahead and pause this recording and type these into your StatCrunch worksheet. The first column here, the first variable, I've labeled as age. Again, each row in our StatCrunch worksheet here is a subject. So we have six subjects in our small study and we have two variables that we're measuring here, age and birth weight. These are interval or ratio level variables very appropriate for doing a scatter plot. So to do the correlation and regression in StatCrunch, as we know there are a couple different ways to do things in StatCrunch. We learned in the beginning of this video series we can get a quick correlation of this data just by clicking on the Stat tab, clicking on Summary Stats, and then clicking on Correlation. We just select our variables here, age and birth weight, and click Compute. And StatCrunch will calculate that correlation for us. Here we see that it's negative, and it's pretty high at negative 0.95. We know that our values vary between 1 and negative 1. Here we have a negative relationship. As maternal age increases, the birth weights go down. We know the StatCrunch can easily graph this information. We can do that first by just clicking on the Graph tab, Scatter Plot, and then identify our variables. So again, our x and y here, our y column should be the dependent variable or the outcome. In this case, it would be birth weight because we're interested in the birth weight of the children that the subjects have. So we place birth weight into the y column, age of the mother goes into the x column, Again, our display is by points. We don't want a line graph. That's just a connect the dots graph. So we want to select points here. We can overlay this with a linear fit, which is the polynomial order 1. So we select 1 there. We can make the line size a little bit larger, make it 3. And our point size, we can make 5. Of course, we can label our graph. So here we want to label the x axis, which is the independent variable. That would be the maternal age. The y-axis is our dependent variable, so that would be the birth weight. That's in grams, so we can put that abbreviate GM. And we can give our graph a title as well. And then we'll click Compute. So StatCrunch will create the graph for us. Again, this reinforces our idea that we have a negative relationship here. So as maternal age increases, in the x direction, our y or dependent variable, the birth weight goes down. And we can copy and paste this into our assignment or final document. So now that we've plotted the data with the regression line and we've got an idea of what r is and what it means here, a negative relationship, we can then calculate the coefficient of determination or r squared. That's done by the software by clicking on the stat tab, regression, we can do simple linear regression, and then this dialog box will open. Again, we select our variables. Our x is the independent variable, which is age. Our y is our dependent or outcome variable, which is the birth weight that we're interested in. The software will also perform the hypothesis test for us. Again, if there's no relationship or a null hypothesis here, it would be the slope would be zero. There would be no correlation between the variables, and our intercept would also be zero. We can also put in here our prediction of y value. This is where we would put in our predicted birth weight for a mother 33 years of age. So that would be the x value. So we put in 33 here. You'll notice on the bottom here that the software will also print out our graphs for us, which we've already done, so we'll leave that blank for now. We'll click Compute, and the software will print out all of the results for us. At the top here, it's giving us the regression results with the dependent and independent variable. It's actually giving us the equation of the line here, which we learned probably in, in math class, that y equals mx plus b. In stats, we just modify that slightly to be y equals a plus bx. Here is our y value, the birth weight, our dependent variable. Next is the a, or the y-intercept, where x equals 0. That's our 3717. 
Next is calculated the slope here. We have a negative correlation here. And again, x is the age. So here's the R value that we also got StatCrunch to print out by just doing the correlation from the stat tab with the summary stats. And here's the R squared value. If we square that number, our negative 0.952, we get 0.907. Remember that that R squared value is what we call the coefficient of determination. And what does it mean? Well, it means that 90% or nearly 91% of the variation we see in birth weight can be explained by age. It's essentially what's called the proportion of variance or this R squared value or coefficient of determination tells us the proportion of variance in the variable Y that is associated with variable X. So basically it's the proportion of variance that is shared by the two variables. So here we would say that 91% of the birth weight is explained by the age of the mother. Next we have the test here. So again we have four degrees of freedom. So it's actually calculating an F statistic here of 39.12. Our p-value here is very low, 0 0.003, well below our 5% cutoff of 0 0.05. And for the mother that was 33 years of age, it calculated or predicted the y-value at 34.14. Now this makes sense if we go back and then and look at the graph of the data. We can see this makes sense because if we have the age here at 33, if we draw that line up where it hits a linear fit, we see that it's occurring at about 34.17 as would be right here. So here's 34.20, 34.10 would be here. So we see it's occurring at this value of 34.14, which is the number we got from our prediction. So the software is able to read this out for us, but we can also estimate that looking at the graph. It's calculating the predicted y value based upon this equation of the line that we got from the linear fit of the data. Not only do we know that we have a significant result because our p-value here is less than 0.05, if we then look at our absolute value of our test statistic here, which is the r-value, compare that to the back of the book, to the table, we would see that our critical value at 4 degrees of freedom, so n minus 2, so with the degrees of freedom of 4, we go across to our 5% level of significance, the r-value, the critical value of r, is 0.811, we see that the absolute value of our test statistic is greater than that value. So it's uh, 0.95 is greater than our 0.81. Again, another indication of a significant result. Our R value is high enough here that the probability of seeing that value of test statistic or higher is about 0.3%. Again, a significant result. So StatCrunch can quickly graph your scatter plot with your fitted line and data points. It can also quickly calculate the correlation coefficient r, the coefficient of determination, significance, and give you a predicted y value based upon your x values using these simple linear regression functions found in the submenus.